出。大家好，欢迎来到唯美集团美国升学直通车。唯美集团美国升学直通车是洛杉矶华人资讯网和唯美教育集团联合制作播出的北美首档大型的网络直播教育节目。在我们的节目当中，你将会了解到最新最权威的教育资讯，还有升学的建议。无论您是学生还是家长，有任何的美国升学教育问题，都可以给我们留言，我们的嘉宾也会回答您的问题。唯美集团是享誉美国的华人教育集团，藤校申请大满贯。他们二十年只做一件事，那就是为在美的华人子女提供大学申请及规划服务。全美十二家办公室七天营业，万博士领衔的硕博顾问团队尽心为华人子女提供最专业、最诚信的教育服务。欢迎大家扫码或直接搜索关注文美集团的微信公众号“美国文美”，及时了解最新最全的美国升学资讯。如果想跟文美的客服互动，请在节目播出期间扫描屏幕左下角的文美客服二维码，或者直接搜索微信号。文美集团的全拼音添加，小红书也可以关注并搜索“文美集团”。文美的咨询热线是幺八八八七八九零九四二。今天在我线上的是文美集团的教育总监万博士，万博士好，主持人好，华人网的朋友们大家好。谢谢万博士。今天呢，我们要跟大家聊的这个话题，其实有很多的家长和同学们哈，应该也关注起来。好，下面进入我们今天的升学大讲堂。那么 ，Mr. 皮尔先生呢，要为大家带来哈这个手把手教你填写 UCLA 还有 UC Berkeley 的申请书。Hi, this is Pierre for Winmay. Today's topic is going to be the UC application. So I'm going to refer to a presentation. The same application would apply for the other UCs as well, but this one is based on UCLA. Okay, so we're going to do a walkthrough with a focus on this early academic outreach program, which we're going to discuss later on. So, to begin, of course, you need to create an account first of all because、um, it's its own independent admissions process for the UCs compared to, for say, a Common App, which would be for over 900 universities in the US. In this case, the UC App is going to be for the nine UC schools. So you begin with that. Next, you transition into filling out your personal information. So, you know if、uh, you were born in the U.S. and where you were born and things like that, and how long you've been here. Which leads to questions about citizenship and residency, and of particular importance are these questions that deal with California residency. So as you can see, the reason why it's because it says it's important for us to know your residency because you at UC has different admission criteria for California and non-California residents. So it's important to make that distinction, and that's why they have these questions, which of course something like the Common App doesn't. Next, they're going to ask you about your parents' education. So. This is to just create your profile, and besides that, they're going to ask about household size and household income and things like that. And this question in particular, like it says here, we may use this information to help us determine if you're eligible for certain outreach programs, scholarships, and other application fee waivers. That it's not used for financial aid.、Uh, of course, that's its own separate process. But、um, this question will be relevant to whether you qualify for an application fee waiver at the very least. Okay, so after you get through that, the next step is to decide how you're going to be applying. So some students who, for example, earn their AA, can think about applying as a transfer student because they will have completed their first two years. However, the majority of Applicants are going to be freshmen. That is, seniors graduating high school that are going to be entering as freshmen at the college level. You also have to indicate the term. So whether you're going to be starting in the summer, in the fall, with most students starting in the fall, and maybe some starting in the spring semester of the following year as well. So I've seen that too. The next. Slide has to do with the geography of the different campuses. 
so you can see at once how the different campuses are located and uh, you do have to indicate your selections um, notice here on the left that they indicate that you qualified for four application fee waivers so of course this was based on the information that you filled out uh, beforehand uh, relating to you know household income and things like that and then it says that after four you would have to pay seventy dollars for each additional application in general when it comes to admission strategy you want to apply to several UCs so that way you increase your chances of getting it to AUC as opposed to just putting everything on one UC of course there's an, a there's a cost associated to that as you saw where each application would be seventy dollars but that's beyond those that they give you an application fee waiver for which of course depends on your eligibility so again this is where you would be indicating um, the different campuses and besides indicating your choices for campuses is you also have to indicate your choices for a major so we've talked about this in other videos but for the most competitive majors it might be a better approach to apply as undecided or at the very least a major in the same school so as you can see here actually some of these universities have two separate categories for major and alternate major except for uc berkeley which doesn't offer an alternate major so choosing a major can kind of put yourself in a box but also it has to do with your chances of getting into the major so if it's a very competitive major applying directly might not be the best option um, so that's why they're giving you basically two chances so let's say you're into physics and math you can think about applying to um, a physics major first and as a math major um, as your alternate major the next thing has to do with UCSD so this is just an example of you showing your preferences in terms of where you'd like to live on campus so you can sort this list and think about you know your first selection second selection and your preferences in terms of how you would want to be ranking your where you want to live on campus from there you transition into academic history with you being able to indicate if you took any math courses for example in seventh or eighth grade and then besides that you have your high school information so this is where you fill out you know where you went to high school of course you can fill out whether it was in california or outside of california or even outside the u.s if you're an international student and from there you start to begin the process of filling out your academic history including summer classes so they're going to ask you about your school's grading system the term system so you'll indicate all of that and once you do that including your graduation plans, you should be able to start entering all your grades manually. So this is where this process can be a little bit more tedious as opposed to Common App, where it's only required by some schools that you enter your courses and grades. But for the UC app, it's part of the application. So it's always required. So as you see here, these are some examples of grades and courses and honors types, everything that's coded already. So you would just look up your class. If there are classes that are not on here, then you would manually enter them. So they have that option here too, that I don't see my courses. So you can manually enter the courses yourself and the grades and honor type and the course name. So you'll continue to do that for all, all school years. Next, they also give you the opportunity to indicate if you attended um, a community college, for instance, for a dual enrollment to complete um, a college course. So this is similar to filling out the information for high school, except you're doing it for a college you attended, you attended uh, during, you know, taking the class that you took. So this would be an example of that. And uh, you would indicate when you took the class and also how you did. And you would look up the class uh, the name of the class and you would indicate your grades 
Um, next, you have something that's really important. This is the additional comments section. So I would say that this is a good opportunity for you to discuss your spike. In other words, your top extracurricular activity. You can provide more context. You can give more information about, you know, what were the things involved and how the program worked or how the extracurricular activity works. You can do things like that. The next slide has to do with updates relating to testing because of COVID. So now UCs have become test optional because obviously during COVID people weren't able to meet to take the test. Um, however, the general consensus is if you scored really well, you should definitely include it uh, for these test optional schools, which include the UCs. And here you can see how you have the possibility of indicating your scores. So, you know, when you took your scores and how you did your scores and you can enter different kinds of scores, ACT or SAT. The next part is the activities section. So you see you have 20 entries as opposed to 10. However, these 20 are made up of activities and awards as opposed to just activities and then separately awards like in Common App. You do have more characters for the description, so you should definitely make use of that. Um, this is just where you would start and you're gonna maximize, so you're gonna do all 20. You have to code what type of activity it is. These are the categories. This would be an example of an extracurricular activity that's filled out. In this case, it's National Honor Society, so you can see the format of how that's gonna look. The next thing would be an award. So in this case, you can see the different things that go into indicating what type of award it was, your eligibility, how you earned the award, the level of recognition, the name of the award, the grade level, and the type of award and things like that. After that, you have the early academic outreach program. So this is if you had already participated in this, you would indicate the information for this. The next part of the application is scholarships. So it is built into the application. You have the possibility of making over a hundred, um, well, a hundred maximum selections. So you can see the different categories for scholarships here, academic major and interest, affiliation with group, program, organization, ancestry and descendants, career plans, ethnicity, national origin or religion, extracurricular activities and work experience, family circumstances and relationships, health and disabilities. And you have some more examples here. You can read this information as you're working through the application to decide which categories and which selections would be best for you. Next, we have the educational opportunity program, which as they state is um, a set of programs that provide assistance through mentor mentorship, academic programs, financial assistance, counseling, advising, and other campus support services to those first generation college students and from low income and education to disadvantaged backgrounds. EOP serves students from all ethnic backgrounds and is open to only California residents and to American Indians for any state, from any state. So if you were interested in this program and you qualify for it based on the other eligibility that they stated, then this is where you would fill out that, that information. From there, you have the personal insight questions where you're given eight prompts. You have to choose four. The length requirements are between 250 to 350 words. And you have another additional comment section, but this, in this case, what we advocate for filling out this information would be to talk about how you overcame adversity, you know, how you overcame obstacles in your life to get to where you are. So it's more like a personal reflection kind of space. So that's how you can frame it. And they do give you some information in terms of how to seek out summer programs. Um, which are the early academic outreach programs, which can help you, you know, transition into uh, UCLA or the other UCs. And that's it. So as we saw, the UC application has various components. It's very, very similar to the Common App, but there are important differences. So keep those in mind. And that's going to be it for today. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.
。今天谢谢万博士和皮尔先生的分享，有任何的问题还可以继续给我们留言。感谢您收看我们今天的节目，我们下期见。